So I've got this meter here, which is a Finosi T DSO TC3. It does all sorts of stuff. So you've got component tester, which is what this bit here is for. You've got the oscilloscope, you've got generator, and general tools and stuff in there as well. I'm quite sure what's in there. I don't know now. Little voltage testing, things like that. It does like some other testers built into it. Um, infrared decoding, which is one of the things I thought was actually quite nice on it. I did a review on this properly before, and the oscilloscope was a bit wanting as it was a generator, but they worked, they, you know, it's alright for hobbyists maybe if you're just doing some audio frequency sort of stuff but it's not great, it's a bit of a gimmick really, but I did a review on it and it was okay but the main thing I'm looking at here is that I was watching a video from Tony259 or 359, whichever channel you're looking at he had one of these, two of you, and it's fine that the ESI readings on this were different to, he's got another tester, he doesn't actually have a proper LCR meter so he's querying it, so I thought I'd just do a little video comparing this to an LCR meter in fact, I've got a few to choose from, but this is the one I've got on the desk right now. So I'm going to do some comparisons between this, the DEI 5000, which is a quite popular meter. Fairly expensive, they're not too bad, I mean, they're okay, they're out there. These are quite trusted meters. I've also got the Shannon tweezer, which is a nice tweezer. These are also quite trusted, these have got good meters. Relatively expensive as well, but they seem to be good quality. And also, the benefit of these, that these actually get updates. So the manufacturer of these things actually listens to consumer feedback and user feedback. And they actually add features and tweak the design slightly things like that where possible in, in the firmware. And you can do a firmware update and get extra features and you get different user interface and stuff like that. So these are quite good. I really like those. I don't use them as much as I should do. You know, I do have them here on hand, but I don't use them that much. I should do. I just kind of forget about them, to be honest. I've got an LCI made to sit on my desk here. And I tend to just grab the leads from that and pull them down. You know, that's what I tend to do. But anyway, these are good. Worth the money, I haven't had any issues with those, they're good. Okay, so let's do some tests for this. And we'll do some comparisons between what this says, what the DER says. Might have replaced one or two capacitors in my time. I've got a lot more than this which I've got in the bin, this is just full, you know, so. This is a mixture of capacitors which are good and bad, some are actually still okay, but I've replaced them anyway because the gears are old and I'll just do that as a matter of course. So let's look at this one first, see what we get. And do a test. So it says 36 microfarad, 0.2% VLOS, ESR 0.48. Remember all that? It shows it on screen anyway, so it's not too bad. But let's check it on this one. We'll see what the DR says. Hmm, bit of a difference in capacitance here. So let's do different frequency. Now I tend to measure electrolytics at 100 hertz or 120 hertz if it was available. So now we're getting 32, which is much closer to 36. Okay, so let's look at the options here. Dissipation, 0 0.2, we've got 0 0.2 there. Yeah, so ESR 11 ohms, this one said 0.48. Yeah, that's interesting, which is what the same thing which Tony was having issues with. They're saying much lower values than this was saying. Okay, let's do the same thing with the Shannon tweezer. See what the Shannon tweezer says. Now, I hope you can see us on screen. Okay, it's a bit small. There you go, capacitance 32 microfarad. And it says 11 ohms. I do test the way I'm holding it, but there you go, it's 10 ohms, 33 microfarad, 100 hertz. So, this is really close to what the DR said it was. So, so far the Shannon tweezer and the DER agree this doesn't. Okay, let's do another test. Let's get this big one, see what this one does. So, this one is a 100 microfarad 400 volt. Hmm. Can't find it. You can't, you can't test that one. Okay, that's a great start. Let's see if the DER can see it. This could be a really sick capacitor, so it's quite entirely possible that's what's wrong. Yeah, this capacitor is completely dead. All right, so 19 pigafarad, 138 mega ohm. So yeah, that's not a good one. Let's see what the Shannon tweezer says of it. Hmm. 
1.7 picofarad and a seen 10 uh, 2 mega ohm on there but it's also showing that this capacitor is dead so they're all basically agreeing that capacitor is no good okay let's get another one because I want to get conclusive testing saying yes or no this is good and no it's bad or whatever it may be very slow to test one thing I do notice so it's 217 microfarad voltage loss of 0.4 ESR 0.4 okay what I do like is the way it holds it on screen I do like the way it does that because it means you can refer to it so this is a 220 microfarad 10 volt and so some of these caps are good some might be I don't know which one this is so it's 202 3.9 ohms very different and let's see what the Shannon tweezer says. Two hundred and two, three point nine ohms. Very similar to what the DR said. This is very wrong. Okay, I've got one more capacitor here. Let's try one more. But so far, it seems like this is just really not good. <laughs> <laughs> capacitance aspect of this seems to be pretty rubbish why is it not testing no. there we go, now it's going that took a while to get going it's like it got stuck for a second so that says 7266 nanofarad mm -hmm. voltage loss 0.2 ESR 0.2 hmm hmm it's almost like the VLOS and the ESR are misreferenced because they always come up the same numbers and I find that interesting because maybe someone's used the wrong variable reference in the firmware so it's actually not looking at the ESR and here we're getting 7.388 so similar capacitance 18 ohms yeah nah uh, and the Shannon tweezer Eighteen ohms, seven three four nine. Again, agrees with a DER. So it shows how good these tweezers are. But this seems to be completely useless for testing capacitors. I wish I'd noticed that when I did the review. So let's just prove this is okay or not. I don't know. So I'll do a calibration. Go into the tools menu as a calibrate option here. Or is it in the manual? It's probably in the manual how to do this actually. Let's read the manual. So I shorted the three leads together and it's saying to please isolate the probes because I've just shorted the leads together and it's done an automatic calibration part so it's unconnect those or disconnect those. There we go, it's automatic. So I might actually run through that again because I'm not quite sure I actually did a decent connection. I think I should do them first, then go to the calibrate menu. Maybe that's the way to do it. Okay, well it says done it. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't like the fact that it's testing maybe straight away whilst I'm still trying to connect things. I'll do this again. And I'll come out of the calibrate menu and go back into it. There we go. I'm going to start again. I just don't trust it to be good. Calibrate. There we go. Let's do it that way. That way you're not messing with the connections. Okay. So then we know it's definitely calibrated as per its instructions and we can go back and try the tester again and see if we're getting the same results. Now let's get one of these ones which we know, let's get this last one we just did, which was, was it 18 ohms or something like that, wasn't it? Does that change anything? DI is going to turn off in a second. ESR is now 0.3 ohms. Okay, so that ruins that theory, maybe, about the ESR measurement and the V loss being the same measurement. So, what my suspicion was here is that in the software, or the firmware, whatever you call it, 
you always have variables which when you're doing software if anyone's ever done software you know this but you have variables which you use as holders and you can put insert values into those and then display them on screen normally that sort of thing so what I was actually wondering is maybe this variable and this variable are the same one maybe they've mislabeled one and they've actually got the same variable in both and the 0.30 is a rounding up of that one maybe it maybe it's doing rounding or that's doing downwards rounding I don't know, who knows, but the fact that so up till now they've been exactly the same. So I was thinking maybe there's an issue there with the firm where they've got the same variable in both values instead of the ESI one being created. But anyway, that's wrong. It still doesn't work even with calibration done. So capacitor testing on this currently is kind of useless. Now I actually contacted Finercy the other day because Ian, who was contacted by them, he sent me an email saying they're looking for reviewers or something. And I, uh, I contacted them and they weren't interested in me doing it. I don't know why, that's a bit weird. Maybe I should tell them that they've got a bit of a problem with this product. I probably should do, eh? Hmm. But yeah, I just wish I'd noticed that after the original review, because that would have been a good thing to have in there. Oh well, now we know. So I've just looked up to terminals 2 and 3 instead of terminals 1 and 2. We'll see if that does anything differently. Second same capacitor, which was 18 ohms, remember rightly? ESI is now 0.13 yeah that's actually worse no good that's definitely a fail so last time I thought I did between 2 and 3 I, I don't know but anyway so I think 1 and 3 was what I did last time and then I've just done 2 and 3 and that's even worse it's 0.07 ohms it's like it's just no between 1 and 2 was the highest resistance but none of them really worked that well so I think for this thing, other than capacitance, forget it. So for those of you who want to know about software versions, this is version 0 0.3 or 0 0.3. Cat, you have to choose now. Can I just finish this video? So this is version 0 0.3 on the firmware. So I'm not sure if there's a newer version for this I have to have a look maybe, maybe it's already been fixed in firmware but uh, right now it doesn't work still if you've got a feature built into a unit you'll think it'll at least be relatively accurate maybe not 100% but certainly a lot more than 10 times out 